All right, friends, in this video, we're gonna be showing you how to build the FT Tutor Standard Trainer Wing and also the FT Turbo Tutor Aerobatic Wing. The first step we're gonna be doing in the wing is popping out all the pieces that we need. Like I said earlier in the intro here, this wing is gonna build the exact same as our sport wing, which we affectionately call the Turbo Tutor Wing. Go ahead and pop out all our pieces, we'll identify them, and we'll get to work. All right, so we have all the pieces that we need for making our main wings. We're gonna have our left and our right wing, we have our center spars, and we also have this little tiny dihedral gauge that you have right here. This is really important. Uh, one thing I'd strongly recommend is do not build your wing without any dihedral. Oftentimes there's a misconception that no dihedral will make the plane more aerobatic. In this case, especially with this airplane, that's simply not gonna be the case. So make sure you put dihedral in your wing to have the best flight experience. Our next step is we're gonna remove the foam from the different areas that we need to. At that point, you can pause the video, make sure everything looks the same, then we'll move on to bevel cuts. All right, feel free to pause the video at this moment, make sure that all the pieces that you have look just like what I have here, and then we're gonna move on to our next step, which is glue in our A-folds and our C-folds. Let's put our wings to the side and we're gonna do the A-folds on our spars first. Anytime we do an A-fold or B-fold, we always wanna make sure we practice that fold to make sure we don't have any extra foam residue or any material on the way to keep us from getting a crisp 90 degree angle. Now A-folds are where the side plate are above the bottom or the top plate. To do a proper A-fold, we're gonna simply leave the side plate firmly against the table. We're gonna rotate the bottom or top plate up 90 degrees and make sure that we can fully seat the bottom plate firmly against the table. We'll do the other side. Looks good. Now that we've done our test fit, we're gonna take our hot glue gun. This is our AdTech FT300. The really nice part about this glue gun is you have a temperature dial here. Whenever I'm building a model, I don't turn it all the way up. That's specifically for whenever you're gluing wood together. I actually like to have this just below medium here. It gives a nice consistent bead of glue and at the same time gives you plenty of time to work with it. So make sure if you have an FT300, set your glue gun just below medium here and then dial to your preference from that point on. I'm gonna go ahead and start my bead of glue at the bottom of the top plate, starting and stopping about a quarter inch from the edge. There we go. I'm gonna fold this up 90 degrees. I'm using the triangle square from my crafty kit to hold this at 90, just to make sure everything is good. And it's always important when we use the table as our friend to put nice even pressure down firmly against the table when we're doing our fold. This is gonna give us a nice crisp edge. After about 30 seconds, we can do the other side. Again, we're starting and stopping about a quarter inch from the edge. Back up to 90 degrees. And then use the flats of your hands to firmly push against the table to keep that edge nice and crisp. That's one spar, let's go ahead and do the other one. Just quickly testing our fold to make sure we can get that full 90 degrees and firmly seat against the table. Anything blocks that or keeps it round, go ahead and remove that extra debris. Focusing our glue on the bottom of the edge, starting and stopping just short. Up to 90. I love this square. Just hold it down. Perfect. An actual tendency for a lot of people whenever they're doing A folds and B folds is to overfold it and cause an angle that's less than 90 degrees. This is going to be a little bit difficult for you in the future when putting the models together. So just always try to focus on having a triangle square, a roll of tape, something to keep you nice and square to the table. And the next time. There we go. Both our spars are done. Let's go ahead and do a C-fold now on our main wings. Now again, this process is the exact same whether it is the sport wing or whether it is the trainer wing. The stock wing that comes with our FT Tutor is gonna be the trainer wing. The sport wing is a wing that you can choose to buy later or as a combo. If we're doing a C-fold, we're gonna simply fold over our foam 180 degrees, give us a nice clean finished edge on the back side, and that looks fantastic. One even bead on the very back, and a slight ribbon on the bottom. Just keep in mind that the hot glue against the paper is gonna make it hot, so watch your fingers on that area. And then we just simply fold and press down 180 degrees. And I just like to use a sweeping motion just to hold this and press this down. There we go. That's one. Same process on the other side. Do my test fold. One even bead on the very back. And then we just simply fold and press down 180 degrees. All right, 
Both of our wings are now done. Our next step is to do a double bevel on the leading edge of our wing. To do this, I'm gonna be using our flight test knife, and this actually has a couple different detents that you can adjust it to. The reason we selected this knife and we're so proud of it is because when you put this in the first detent from being fully extended, it works great in your hand to be able to put the perfect bevel cut down. You can actually use the back groove here on your knife, and you can also use this front tip to get the proper angle to make the knife glide nice and easy. Now, anytime that you cut a bevel, you wanna keep the blade as close as possible to the paper without cutting through. If you do excellent cut through, no worries, just put a piece of tape on during your build process, and then you can pull the tape off afterwards, and it'll be good as new. I'm gonna go ahead and start my cut here, get my blade right by the paper. There we go. And a simple pull is all we need right down the edge. There's one. And there's two. Let's do the same process on the other side of the wing. Always remember you can practice your bevel cuts anytime on a scrap piece of foam. Again, I'm just notching this down, letting this knife sit on the back edge, right on the foam. I'm keeping this as close as possible to the paper, and just a nice even pull back. Make sure you don't accidentally let it wander into the paper and cut through it. One more side. And whenever you do a double bevel cut, make sure that you can easily move your foam up 90 degrees without any resistance. This is gonna be the perfect amount that you need to be able to do a proper fold over. Any less is gonna cause your leading edge to be a little bit too aggressive. Any more is gonna cause your wing to be a little bit too sharp. Now that we have our bevel cuts done, we're gonna glue on our spars. Now both of these spars are the exact same where they can go to the left or the right, but you do wanna make sure that your servo hole and that your wing notch right here are lined up properly over top of it. You're gonna notice a couple etch marks on the front and the back of the bottom surface of your wing. Make sure that you line those up perfectly. You're gonna notice also that the rectangle for the wing is slightly bigger than the rectangle on the spar. That's so your servo can sit in very easily. We're gonna go ahead and line this up, just do a quick practice here. Make sure everything looks good, and it does. I'm gonna flip this over now. Place a nice bead of glue right down on there. Just like that. I can flip this over. Again, I'm gonna be lined up with my marks. Hold this down for about 30 seconds and let the glue fully cure. Now, a lot of times in our earlier builds, we would show Dragon Barbecue skewers down through the foam wing. We don't wanna do this. We want the wing to naturally crinkle over and if you're building a speed build kit, this already has the perfect amount dialed in to be able to have it easily crease over. Now, if you're scratch building the plane, you're gonna notice that these lines are red on the plans and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have these open up so they have a little bit of a crease to it. At that point, it may be good to take the very tip of a barbecue skewer and to slightly just penetrate the paper so that it'll establish where the crease needs to be. Make sure you don't make these openings too big or else your wing is gonna be inconsistent from one side to the other. Maybe a little bit too aggressive on the leading edge. Let's go ahead and do a practice fold. And to do my practice fold, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my two thumbs, put them right over where the spar is. I'm gonna gently lift up with my fingers and I'm gonna let the wing crinkle in just like you see here. Now with the flats of my hands, I'm gonna press down. I'm gonna let the top surface here go firmly against the top spar, which should make the top surface of that area parallel with the bottom surface. And then with my thumbs, I'm gonna press down on the back, letting it push up against the double or C fold. That looks wonderful. To add a little bit of extra strength, I'm gonna take my hot glue gun, and I'm gonna put the nozzle of the hot glue gun right over that seam, and I'm gonna put two thin beads of glue right down. Make sure you don't get too aggressive on those beads of glue, or else you may accidentally glue your spar in prematurely. Same process as before. I'm gonna go ahead and lat this wing done. I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna lift up, go back down again. One, two, three, four, five, lift up. All we're doing is we're letting the glue fully harden so that it holds the shape of the top surface of the wing. Now you can see that the glue is hardened. The top surface of the wing is holding its shape. Our next step is we're gonna put four beads of glue a bead of glue on the leading edge, both pieces of the spar, and on the trailing edge. Nice healthy bead of glue on the leading edge, starting and stopping about a quarter inch from the edge. Healthy bead of glue on the spar. And finally, a nice bead of glue. I'm gonna favor the back trailing edge here. Sorry, I'm shaky, a little bit coffee there. There we go. 
And now we're gonna hold this down. Again, we're gonna use the palms of our hands, nice, even pressure. Notice I'm putting my pressure over this bar and over the back trailing edge. The leading edge is gonna take care of itself. A really important thing to note is you don't wanna be impatient at this point. You wanna let the glue fully dry before we move on to the next step. If you release this prematurely, it could lift up on you. All right, just a couple minutes in and we already have one half of the build of the wing done. Let's go and do the same process now on the other side. I'm gonna line up my servo holes and my end holes on the hash marks. Make sure everything is nice and even. Perfect. Let's flip that over. Feed glue all the way down. Flip it back over on the surface, lining up my hash marks. A little notch there. There we go. After that's dried, we're gonna take our thumbs and our fingers, we're gonna pull this up, establishing the curve of the wing, using the flats of our hands, doing a quick test fit, making sure that the top of the surface of the wing right over the spar is parallel to the bottom and also that our trailing edge fully seats down against the table. Then we're gonna come back, nice and a bead of glue down right over that score on both sides. This is gonna give you tremendous strength on your wing and also hold its shape. Back down over, one, two, three, four, five, let it lift, down again, one, two, three, four, five, lift it up and down again. Now that we have the surface of our wing shaped, we're gonna put a bead of glue on our leading edge, our main spars, and our trailing edge. Once again, for the final time, back down, all of our attention now is gonna go pressing down evenly on the top portion of the spar and our trailing edge, the leading edge will take care of itself. We're also gonna make sure that the bottom surface of our wing is firmly and evenly against the table. And we're gonna let this fully dry and not rush it so the wing has its proper shape when the glue dries. Now that we have both sides of the wing done, we're gonna join them. Now it's very important with this that we push together the two bottom surfaces of the wing as tight as possible. And I'm gonna use a piece of tape here and I'm gonna hold them together. So we got that part pushed tight against itself and the top. I like just to hold this with two thin pieces of tape and then I can come back with my thicker tape and put this on. Again, this is our tape that's included with our crafty kit. It is insanely sticky. We put a lot of heart in selecting the glue guns, the rulers, the knives, everything here. You'll be amazed. Put this tape on your foam and then peel it off. See how good it sticks. All right, one quick piece right on the bottom here. I'm not worrying about the very back trailing edge because I want that to clam shell open for me. Press this down. Now at this point, I can open up my wing like a book, just like you see here, and I can put my dihedral in. Now before we put any glue down, I'm gonna take my dihedral gauge and I'm gonna make sure my table has plenty of clearance here so one side of the wing can sit firmly against the table. The other part, is gonna be clipped into this dihedral gauge, just like you see here. And that's gonna give us the proper amount of dihedral that we need. Now, if you don't push your wings tightly together, you're gonna have a much larger gap in the center section here, and you don't want that because if you fill it with glue, it's not gonna give you as strong of a joint as if it's tight together. So now that we have this stuck on like you see here, we're gonna open this up 180 degrees. I'm gonna focus all my glue on one side. Be careful not to put too much glue on the tape or it may actually melt the tape and cause it to fail. Nice healthy bead of glue. Plenty of time to work, you don't ever have to rush it. And now I'm gonna let the wing sit just like we see here. I can take a little scrap piece of foam, any excess that came out, we can just wipe off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my fingers and I'm gonna hold this perfectly in alignment. If you have anything that maybe needs shifted forward and backward, while the glue is hot is your time to do that. I'm gonna hold this for about a minute to a minute and a half, make sure everything is completely dry before moving on to my next step. Now that the glue is dried, I'm gonna come back one more time and I'm gonna put a thin bead of glue right over this seam that you see here. Now I'm gonna take a scrap piece of foam that I have handy and I'm simply gonna wipe it down right over the top edge. What I'm doing is I'm basically pushing this down into the edge there 
and that's going to provide a tremendous amount of strength here. We're going to let this dry about a minute and a half, making sure none of the glue is tacky, and then we're going to seal it with another piece of tinge tape. I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit over on the top and the bottom. Just lay that tape nice and flat down. There we go. Fold it over one side and fold it over the back side. All right. Now, if you're building a three channel wing, you do not have to worry about the next step. A three channel is basically where you fly the airplane from rudder, elevator, and throttle. Whenever you do a three channel airplane, the rudder acts as your ailerons, and then you'll have a coordinated bank, which will turn you evenly. That is one reason why we have dihedral in the airplanes. But also if you're a beginner, starting off with a three channel airplane oftentimes makes things much more simple. Now, if you're installing an FT or a light, you definitely want to put the ailerons in, whether you're a beginner or an advanced pilot, because level assist works best going through the ailerons. Now for our ailerons, this step is going to be the exact same whether you're building the turbo tutor wing, the aerobatic wing, or whether you're building the training wing. You're just going to notice that the etch marks and the score marks are going to be slightly different. With the trainer wing, you're going to notice that you're going to have barn door style ailerons all the way out of the wing tips that are significantly smaller than the other ailerons. It's important just to keep note that wherever the etch mark is, is where you're gonna to wanna to cut for each wing. For the aerobatic wing, you're gonna notice that they're full span ailerons and that there is no etch mark, but the actual guideline is gonna be the very back edge of the aileron that you see here. All we simply need to do for that is lay down a long roller right up against this and then go along the line, just like you see here. So let's go ahead and cut out our ailerons and we'll do our bevel. All we're simply gonna to need to do is we're gonna go right along here making sure we don't cut all the way through the wing. And then for the other edge mark, we're gonna cut all the way through. There we go. We're gonna fold this over 180 degrees. And then just like we did before, we're gonna cut our 45 degree bevel. Whenever we cut our bevel, let's cut that on the aileron side, not on the wing side. A little saw motion at the very end, makes it very easy to get that through. Make sure you have even throw both directions and that nothing's resisting it. If anything is resistant, just go back through and shave off a little bit more foam until you have no resistance either way. Now that we have our bevel cut and everything's good, we're gonna come back with a thin bead of glue right over the paper, right down the middle, and then come back with a scrap piece of foam and wipe off the excess. This is gonna make the hinge incredibly strong and last a very long time. Give this a good minute to dry, making sure that none of this is tacky before you fold it closed. All right, same process on the other side. We're gonna cut our score line down just above the paper. And then the other edge line is gonna be cut all the way through. Fold it over 180 degrees. Double cut on the aileron. And then just use a sawing motion whenever we're coming into a closed corner for a bubble cut. All right, motion is good. Let's reinforce it with a little bit of hot glue to make sure it lasts a lifetime. So now that we have our ailerons cut in, our last step is to take an included popsicle stick in with our small pack. We're going to glue this right on the back trailing edge and the reason is very important here. This is going to make your wing reinforced against the rubber bands cutting into the foam. So all we simply need to do is simply split it right down the middle. I like to put just a little tiny crack in the middle just like you see here to match that dihedral on your wing so it's not stressed too much. And then I'm just going to simply glue it down. Right at the very back here. And we're just going to hold this in place for about 30 seconds and let it dry. All right, so our wing is now done. Our next video that we're going to have in this playlist is showing you how to install our electronics. Now, even if you installed electronics in the past, this is a really great refresher. Plus, we're going to show you a couple extra tips on how you can do things like install differential mechanical linkage in your ailerons so you don't have to mix a little bit of rudder in to get coordinated turns. Feel free to check down in the description below for the next video. Let's keep building.